Hi, I'm uh, Chris Riley, and I'm the 2018 winner of the Lowe's Terrapin Homebrew Competition Challenge. And uh, I'm here to tell you about my experience and share everything I, I can with you. Uh, Kevin Paparazzi, the media guru of Terrapin, asked me to send him a video. Kevin, I'm sorry it's taking so long. Um, I was hoping for some help from my ladies, my daughters, and my wife so that uh, I could just talk and do the video wouldn't have to hold the camera. I'm sorry if it's a little choppy. I'm sorry if it's moving around, but I'm going to do the best I can. So I got my kegerator here behind me and uh, some of my awards um, from homebrew comps. But my coolest one and uh, the one I'm talking about today has to do around this beer. If I can get it here. <laughs> Pursue your passion. It's a passion fruit IPA that I made and entered into the 2018 Terrapin Lowe's competition, and I was lucky enough and blessed enough to take first place. Um, so we're going to chat a little bit about it and let you know how cool that experience was. Um, that noise you hear in the background, I apologize. I'm actually brewing today. Why not? So that noise you hear is my is my uh, my burner going in my kettle. So I'm gonna try to talk loud enough so you guys can hear me. I'm gonna sit here and maybe take away some of the shakiness. And I'm also gonna have a beer. Hope you guys don't mind. Oh, nice glass. Where'd you get that? Okay. So uh, let's start from the beginning. I, as you can see from the beer I'm drinking. I typically like malty stouts, porters, things like that. Don't typically do um, IPAs, hoppy stuff. I'll drink them occasionally, um, but I'm, it's just not my thing. It's starting to be. I'm starting to really develop a palate for them, but up to this point, I've only brewed maybe one or two IPAs, and um, certainly not many fruit beers. I've had problems with fruit beers. And a lot of brewers can tell you, there, that looks like it's going to stay still. A lot of brewers can tell you, fruit beers sometimes are tough. It's tough to get a um, source of fruit. Fresh fruit, a lot of times you have to worry about um, contamination, wild yeast on the fruit, um, moldy fruit. Just if you can't get a good source of fresh fruit. Purees and, and frozen a lot of times they don't give you the flavor you want. Um, the frozen especially, you, it's just, it's obviously not fresh. So you don't get the flavor, you don't want the aroma. The purees, a lot of them sometimes are, um, taste artificial. I was lucky enough to find a puree that really worked and we'll talk more about that. But So I had, so I hadn't brewed uh, many IPAs and I certainly hadn't had good results with fruit beers. But my wife, Kim, who a lot of my brewing revolves around, asked me to brew a passion fruit IPA. And uh, I had some friends that enjoy IPAs, and I thought, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's brew one. Uh, did some research, found a recipe I really liked, brewed the beer. But I kept thinking, man, how am I going to get this passion fruit flavor in here that Kimmy really wants? Uh, brewed the beer, and... Uh, a week later, the weekend after the Brew the Beer, was the National Homebrew Conference in Portland, which was totally awesome. First time I ever went, and I'm never going to miss another one. I met so many great people, um, a, lot of, a lot of great programs and, and learning sessions. Met some of the, my brewing uh, mentors and I consider icons. You know, John Palmer, Zane Chef, all these guys. So, went to the Homebrew Competition, or Homebrew Competition, went to the Homebrew Conference, and um, one of the vendors there, Emeretti, was giving out, uh, they specialize in, 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 in puree, fruit, pure, fruit purees for beers. Um, whether a lot of times they'll, uh, you could add them per glass, just one or two pumps, or you can add them per batch. And one of the things they were giving away was passion fruit puree samples. And I thought, man, it's perfect. It's not cost me anything. It's it's sterile. Uh, 
I don't have to worry about sanitizing it and we'll see how it turns out. So I took a couple of those samples and I, I planned on using those in my IPA that I made. Came back from the competition, or comp I keep saying competition. Came back from the conference, more beer will help. Came back from the conference, um, beer was done. I decided instead of putting the fruit into secondary and really risking it fermenting out and losing flavor and aroma, I was gonna cold crash the beer, let the as much of the yeast drop out as I could, and then keg it, and then um, add the puree to kegging. So that um, I, I was hoping by doing this, uh, like I said, a lot of the fruit aroma, the sweetness, the flavor, everything that I wanted from the passion fruit wouldn't ferment out because a lot of that yeast would have dropped out. And by storing it cold, I was hoping it wouldn't ferment out, which is a problem I've had with a lot of my previous um, fruit beers. So that's what I did. And here comes my son. Hey, Don. I'm making a video, so you can come in there if you want. <laughs> um, so that's what I did. I added the passion fruit. Hold on. Do you need something, boy? Yes, you may have a cupcake. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, <laughs> so I added the passion fruit to uh, the kegging and obviously the results were fabulous. I think that worked out great and any other future fruit beers I make I'm going to try to do that. Um, it really retains the flavor, the aroma. It wasn't very sweet. It fermented out a little bit so it wasn't really sweet but the balance was just perfect. It was spot on I, I think and the judges thought too. Uh, so that, that's where the beer started but you know I brewed all this before I even knew about the competition. Like I said, Kim had asked me to brew a passion fruit IPA, some friends like IPAs, so I went ahead and brewed it. Uh, a couple weeks after the beer was ready, I read about this Lowe's, I'm sorry, this keeps going out of focus, in and out, doing the best I can, guys, I'm sorry. Um, a few weeks later, I read about the Lowe's Terrapin homebrew competition, the challenge, and it was a passion fruit, or I'm sorry, was a fruited IPA challenge. And I thought, you know, I didn't really brew it for this, but I've got it. I've got the beer brewed. And what a better way to get some constructive criticism, feedback, some helpful feedback on a beer I don't brew very much than to enter this competition. That That's why I've always entered competitions is to get a, 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 a blind a, a true evaluation of my beer people that don't know it's easy when you give beer to your friends of course they're going to love it it's free they're not going to complain um, but I started entering competitions to get a blind evaluation and I've done okay I've done okay which has helped my brewing and, and this was another opportunity um, a free opportunity most competitions you have to pay for this was free enter the competition get some criticism some feedback on this IPA that I made for the first time, see what they think. And what the hell, you never know. So there were seven different locations throughout North and South Carolina. For a total of, I, I want to say 250 was the cap. I'm not sure if they met the full amount. Um, 250 total entrance was possible. And um, when I was notified that I had won my region or my uh, I guess region, location, whatever there's seven different locations they had texted me later that day congratulations, you're the winner for this and so there's seven now out of 250, I was so excited just for that that was awesome um, I got a, a, an Osprey a Terrapin Osprey backpack some other awesome Terrapin swag and just the fact that I finished seven out of 250, I thought it was great and I had a chance to win the grand prize Never thought I would do that. Never thought that was possible. But I'm free rolling, man. I mean, I entered my beer for free. I got all this free swag. Um, I finished 7th out of 250. I thought, cool, we're golden. We're good to go. It doesn't matter what happens. Um, and then one of the main things I was worried about is the finals were about a month later after the initial competition. And anyone that brews beer, anyone that brews IPAs especially knows that 
those beers are at their peak when they're fresh. After a while, the, the hot bitterness drops out, the aroma, the flavor starts to drop out. And um, the same with fruit, you know, you, you don't want to sit in too long, you kind of want to drink it fresh. So I was worried about that, that the finals were almost a month after the initial competition and probably two months, two and a half months after my initial brewing. So a little worried about that, but there's nothing I could do about it. Um, we'll just go with it and see what happens. So the day of the finals came, and uh, it was pretty cool, pretty interesting. Uh, most of the competitions, every other competition I've, I've gone to, like I said, it's a blind competition. You enter your beers. I've judged it some. I've, I've stewarded others. And a lot of times, you you know, the other guys you're judging with or stewarding with, most likely they have beers entered in the competition, but you don't know that. You don't know for sure if they have them. You don't know what category they're entered. You don't know if the beer you're tasting might be one of theirs. You just don't know that. This competition was totally different because the other six finalists, myself making seven, were there. So we knew exactly who you're competing against. We knew exactly, um, you know, what what you're going for. And um, even though we were all competitors and, and wanting to win, we all got along great. It was awesome. I made six new friends. Some of them I still stay in touch with. And, um, you know, we were able to talk about our beers, what we made, our experiences, and it was great. Had some nice terrapin beer while I was sitting there waiting. I believe I had... Uh, the Mu, I think I had Muhu while I was waiting. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I had they had two or three others, but I was drinking Muhu, which is my favorite style. I was drinking. They didn't have Wake and Bake. I wish they did. They didn't have that at the uh, at the lows that they were doing the finals. But I was drinking Muhu. So waited about an hour, hour and a half, and then they got us all together to announce the uh, the winner. And the funny thing about this is. Throughout the whole process, yep, I had to print out these labels for my for my bottles of beer, and it had an entry number. So after seeing them two three times, I I recognized the number. And when they announced the winner, they um, they announced the entry number first. So I I knew I'd won before they mentioned before they called my name. You know, it was like. They went through a, a, a nice speech and thanking everyone for participating. How much they appreciate everybody. The beers were good. It was hard to come up with a winner. We decided on a winner. Entry one, two, three, four, whatever it was. And I knew that was my entry number. And then they said, congratulations, Chris Riley. And I was just like, wait, what? You know, thank you for the free, thank you for the backpack. Thank you for the Terrapin swag. Thank you for the free beer and the awesome um, experience. But you're telling me I just won this thing? No way. No way I just won this thing. And I was so excited. Um, yeah, the other guys, like I said, even though we're all competitors and wanted to beat, beat each other, they were all really great congratulating me. And uh, I had to just kind of sit there for a minute before I could leave. May I had may I had to do something with the muhus I had. I was feeling a little funny and probably couldn't drive just yet, but I was in awe and just kind of had to sit there. And I was like, wait, are you telling me I just won this awesome competition and the grand prize is phenomenal? So uh, after sitting for a while and calling my wife and, and finally driving home, let it sink in, we're going to Atlanta to brew my beer, my homebrew recipe at a commercial brewery. Um, pretty awesome. It, it wasn't the first time I was lucky enough to win a Pro-Am, but this is pretty big. The, the first rest, first thing I, I, first Pro-Am I won was a, uh, a brewed a Perry, which is a pear cider. Again, for my wife, Kim Riley. Anytime I brew something for Kim, it seems to win. What are you going to do? So, uh, husbands out there that are brewing brew for your wife if they let you i'm so lucky to have kim that supports my brewing let's be honest how many wives want their husbands out in the garage brewing uh every other weekend or every weekend or whatever luckily luckily enough i make stuff she likes so she uh wants me to brew and then the stuff i make for her 
wins awards. Half those ribbons you saw up there were for stuff she that she asked me to make or that she likes. So, sorry. So the first uh, Pro-Am was I made a pair of cider and uh, in a Pro-Am competition, it won first place, best of show. Uh, Good Roads Cider Works in Charlotte brewed it. We, we went and brewed it and um, it was awesome. We served it at Oktoberfest in Charlotte. Awesome time. But this is big league. This is Terrapin. This is Terrapin Brewing, man. You're, you're, you're not just in the state of North Carolina, you know, with a, with a really good road cider works. Awesome. But they're local. They may, you know, they have a local tap room. They distribute locally. This is Terrapin, man. This is big time. And I was pretty excited because, um, up to this point I had, I had a really good, um, Terrapin was one of my favorite breweries. One of my favorite beers of all time, Wake and Bake. Talk about the Moohoo, but the Wake and Bake, epic. And um, one of the first clones I made, clone beers I made, was the, based on the Wake and Bake recipe. Uh, whenever I get into a hobby, I go all in. Kim can tell you that. I research the hell out of everything. I, I read as many books as I can. I find blogs. I talk to people. I join clubs. And I found awesome podcasts through the Brewing Network. And a lot of you brewers will know about that. And uh, I've learned so much from listening to them. And I listened to two or three um, episodes about Terrapin. And one of the shows they do, it's called Can You Brew It? And uh, listeners will send in commercial beers that they like. And um, the, the brewer, Jamil, Danny Chef, and uh, John Palmer will try to we'll taste the beer. We'll call the brewery, the brewer, try to come up with a homebrew scale recipe so that you can make this beer. And they did that with Wake and Bake. They called Terrapin, spoke to Spike. <laughs> Spike's awesome. I'm so... One of the best parts of this whole experience was just meeting him, hanging out with him, drinking beers with Spike, and talking beer with a fellow home brewer that, that made it big. Um, but listening to Spike on this episode talking about Wake and Bake, and I took diligent notes. Listened to I probably listened to the show five or six times before I tried to make this beer. Um, taking notes, listening to every little detail he had to say, the mash, temperature, everything and the most important part was the coffee um, and how he used the coffee uh, jittery joe's so i actually ordered jittery joe's wake and bake coffee and i used it in my beer and um, i made that beer i submit it and it wins every year every year i submit it to competitions first place i, I submit it as an oatmeal stout i get first place ribbons all the time with that beer so thank you spike my version is called Snow Worries. Um, I brewed it. First time I brewed it was in, a, was in February. And I was out brewing it, and it started snowing. And I was like, are you kidding me? Never brewed it. Brewed a couple times in the rain, but the snow. And my daughter, Megan, who's my assistant at times, said, Daddy, Snow Worries, Snow Worries. And that name stuck. And that's what I name it every year. And it wins ribbon after ribbon after ribbon. And that's because it's a Terrapin clone. And uh, Spike's awesome. So I'm sorry I went on that little tangent. But tangent, but like I said, Terrapin to me is, is, is a great brewery. I love a lot of the stuff they do. I love darker beers. So we're talking Wake and Bake. We're talking um, the Liquid Bliss, which I had recently. Awesome. Moohoo. I had the Moohoo Caramel. I had the Wake and Bake um, Irish uh, whiskey, they just phenomenal. And uh, I'm I'm drinking a lot of other stuff just to the the watermelon goose. Kim loves that. Um, so my point is that that Terrapin is it's a great brewery that um, really focuses on quality. Focuses on um, like I said, Spike Star is a home brewer, man. I mean, they've gotten so big, and and it, they're not totally independent anymore. You know they're they're owned by 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 um, Miller Coors, but they still operate like they did once when, when when Spike was 
entirely in control as a home brewer, <laughs> home brewer mentality. And um, couldn't do any better than, than, than to win with these guys. So I'm getting off a little bit on tangent. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm just so happy. And um, Kevin, you're probably going to edit half of this out because I'm drinking. It's blurry. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to go on and you take out whatever you think you need to take out. Um, so, yeah, they announced my name. I won. What? Grand prize, which consists of making the beer at Terrapin, you know, spending a weekend in Atlanta. They took us to a football game. Let's get into all that. It's awesome. So December 2nd, I think it was a Saturday, uh, Kim and I went to uh, the Brew Lab in Atlanta. Met a ton of awesome people. I've already mentioned Spike. Um, Malcolm, Malcolm Frazier, who unfortunately he's no longer with Terrapin. He's moved to another brewery, but he's a very talented brewer. Awesome. Um, and because of him, I started listening to Brewlosophy, another podcast. Fellow home brewers, I've already mentioned the, the, the Brewing Network, um, but Brewlosophy got some awesome stuff out there. Malcolm's an awesome contributor. Learned so much. Just I was only with him half a day, and I learned a ton. We still try to stay in touch. I still text him every once in a while. Awesome guy. Thank you, Malcolm. Kevin, a.k.a. Paparazzi, who I'm making this video for. I tell you, the best part, one of the best parts about this um, experience, of course, something like this happens, and the first thing you want to do is you want to, you want to try to document it. Take as many pictures as you can. You don't want to forget it. You know, I, I've got a ton of souvenirs. I made that shadow box. But you want to take pictures. You want to take videos. But at the same time, as you're, if you're doing that, you're missing the experience. You know, it's like when you, um, you, let's say you go on vacation to Disney and you want to video your kids so you, you have videos, but you're missing it in time. You're not experiencing it. You might have the videos, but you're going to miss it. Kevin did the greatest thing ever. We got there. He said, listen, I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to take videos. You and Kim, enjoy the day. Enjoy your time, which was awesome. Because I was so worried. Oh, man, I want to get pictures. Oh, there goes my timer for my mash. Hold on a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, Kevin, that was awesome. And he said, he said, don't worry about anything. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the experience. I'll send you every picture I have, every video. So, thank you, Kevin. That was awesome. I appreciate that. So, Saturday we went. And we brewed, and I had a freaking awesome time. Um, lunch was awesome. The experience was awesome. We brewed the beer. And then um, the next day, Sunday, we went to a football game. Um, as you can see here, let's see. I'm a, oh, you can't really see it. I'm a Cowboys fan. Don't hate me. Don't you hate me for being a Cowboys fan. Messed up. There we go. Um, but it was, it was, it was Ravens, Falcons, Ravens. And just a couple weeks prior to that, Falcons played the Cowboys. So I'm thinking, man, if it only been a couple weeks earlier, it would have been perfect. But the game was awesome. The experience was awesome. Stadiums, I believe first time I've been to the stadium. Um, Terrapin Lowe's put us up at a hotel downtown Atlanta. We ended up walking. It was close enough to walk. Great time. So we're walking there. We go into the stadium. And of course, first thing I, I want a beer. I'm ready. You know, we we didn't we didn't tailgate, but I'm ready for a beer. We're walking through. The only thing I see are the um, American light lagers. Let's say, not very many um, craft beer choices. And I'm thinking, ah, am I gonna have to pay twelve dollars for a whiskey? What's what's going on? I want I want a good beer. I want a good something good. And as we're walking around. We come around the corner to go to our seats. Oh, there's Terrapin. There's Terrapin, man. They're uh, not really a tap room, but their section. Ter you know, right where we were sitting in our, our seats was the Terrapin, um, the beer tent, not a tent, but beer garden, whatever you want to call it. And it had all Terrapin beers, and um, I was good to go after that. Great game, good experience, awesome uh, restaurants, and, and really good time in Atlanta. Uh, not only the brew day, but the game and just the overall weekend. So thank you, Terrapin, for that. Um, and then you think, okay, 
you won the competition, you brew the beer, that's the end of it. I want to taste the beer, man. I want to see how it came out. And that really wasn't an official part of the competition, but I talked to Mark, the, uh, the tap room manager at the brew lab, and I said, Mark, I said, you got to let me know when this is ready because I want to come back and taste this. He's like, yeah, of course, man. Of course you want to taste this beer. Uh, so we brewed it the first weekend of December. And then, you know, I figured it would take about a month, but then you had the holidays. You had Christmas and New Year, stuff like that. Take a little longer to dry hop, condition the beer. So it was close to the end of January. And then Mark contacted me and said, it's ready, man. When are you coming? Um, so Kim and I made another trip out there. And the coolest thing, you, you already saw a picture of that coolest thing was that tap panel. That, that Mark provided for me. Um, I get, Kim and I, we have we have brew parties, uh, home brew parties twice a year. And I, I've got eight taps over there. So I brew like a mother, and then uh, we have some great beer. And I'll be brewing my Passion Fruit IPA every party. And now I've got a cool tap handle to serve it from. And that was, that was pretty cool for him to do that. He didn't have to do that. And I appreciate that, Mark. Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm just so happy and excited. Um, you know, not only do I enjoy Terrapin beer and I have, and, and I'm not just saying that cause I won the competition, but they make good beer. I also enjoy Lowe's foods. You know, I live here in North Carolina. They're a local company. The Lowe's, there's Lowe's foods and there's Lowe's hardware. They're brothers, you know, out of North Carolina. And the cool thing about Lowe's Foods is they have a little beer den, and they always have beer. So my favorite thing is to tell Kim, hey, I'm going to go to the store and get some bread and milk. I have a couple beers while I'm there. So Lowe's was a perfect partner to partner up with Terrapin. I hope they do it again. I don't know what the, f what the plans are for future competitions. I'd love to be involved. I'd love to compete again. And... Um, it's just really cool. This whole this whole experience is cool. I keep saying that over and over again. Uh, Homebrewers out there, man, you 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 gotta you gotta do this. It's pretty cool. Oh, the name. Let's. I forgot about the name. How could we forget about the name? So, you know, as as homebrewers, you come up with with a with a beer you like. You name whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You don't have to deal with the government or or. Uh, labeling or whatever you have to deal with as, as a commercial brewer. If, from what I understand, they had a hard, Terrapin had a hard time getting wake and bake through initially. It has since been approved, but the initial name of the beer was uh, Two Minutes of Passion. I thought it was cool. Um, it plays on the word passion. And the fact that the beer is, is so smooth and well-balanced you can really enjoy it in two minutes. You can enjoy it. You can drink the whole pint in two minutes. And, and so that's kind of where I, you know, play on that, play on the other stuff that's not necessarily acceptable. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't go with that name. You know, um, the name we went with, I think, is, I'm, I'm glad, I'm almost glad because the name we decided on was so much better. And that's Pursue Your Passion. And uh, since I started home, I started homebrewing as a hobby, but I love it, man. I love it. I, I've become so, um, I don't know, <laughs> engulfed or, or I just love it. I love homebrewing. I love everything about it. I love the creativity of it. I love the chemistry involved. I'm, I'm a pharmacist. My, my day job and the chemistry it just flows and... Uh, some I'd love to own my own place. Someday I like Spike. I'd love to be Spike 2.0. Start as a home brewer and open your own joint. And uh, I'm pursuing my my passion is brewing and I'm pursuing that. It's an ongoing pursuit. So I think that name was perfect. Um, obviously a play on the passion fruit, but ultimately it goes back to my my passion of brewing and my pursuit of. Uh, Maybe someday be owning my own place. And uh, who knows? You guys can maybe have a beer at my own joint. So I've been going on a long time, almost 30 minutes. Again, Kevin, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to tell my whole story, get as much as I could out there. 
you can edit whatever you want, delete whatever you want. I don't know, but uh, that's pretty cool. So we'll, we'll just we'll finish off. We'll do a quick uh, quick thing. I want to show you my. Um, of course, we saw the picture of my kegerator, but this terrapin, um, the shadow box, it's got all my goodies in there. Let me get my sanitizer out of the way. It's got my um, my mash paddle. That's a mash paddle that I actually brewed with, and I brought it to Terrapin. I said, guys, this is kind of corny, but uh, can you sign my mash paddle? And I, I want to keep it as a souvenir. So we've got Malcolm on there, and Spike, Mark, Kevin, um, Chad, Peter. I, I can't read the other name. <laughs> Sorry, scribbled, but awesome time. Got some cool swag. Terrapin makes awesome beer. Um, Lowe's is, like I said, a, a, a great uh, local grocery store. And it, it, it couldn't be better than to have, than to have those two involved. Um, I'm going to sign off now. I got some beer to make. But thank you. Cheers. And um, pursue your passion.